good morning. A little bit discombobulated this morning. A bunch of stuff came up that uh, I wasn't really expecting or planning for. You ever have one of those mornings, you know, Linda and I have a sign that hangs somewhere on our, uh, I think it was in our laundry room. Anyway, it said, uh, the hurrier I go, the behinder I get. So this is one of those mornings I'm coming on early. My apologies. Um, yeah, had some things come up that I wasn't ready for. <laughs> and that's kind of the way life is, isn't it? There's always things that you're not ready for. Like I'm looking at this home thing and that's gonna, I know this is totally not what you're supposed to do when you're live videotaping. You're not supposed to get up and that's protocol, right? But that would have bugged me the whole program. So good morning. Glad to have you with me here today. It's a beautiful day. Uh, we're getting ready to have some stuff done here uh, today around the house. So yeah, all kinds of things going on. So uh, glad to have you with me today. I want to just really, um, you know, get right to it this morning. Good morning, Linda. Thank you for those of you who are up and saw this. Uh, I have people ask me all the time, hey, Jim, how come I never see your program? I have no real answer for that. Number one, you have to subscribe. And so when we post something, it'll automatically, hey, there's Kathy. And who is that? I can't see that it's Kathy. God bless you. Anyway, if you have not subscribed, like to the, the channel here, then uh, Facebook, you know, is a little different than YouTube. But yeah, then you won't necessarily see the notice. And it's one of the reasons I always come on and tell people what time it is. But sometimes it catches me unawares like this morning. So yeah. All right. I want to talk today about something I consider to be extremely important in the day in which we live. And that is the subject of encouragement. Now, when I started the program a couple years ago, 665 programs ago, um, it was because I heard the Lord speak that. Now, I would not have been the guy that probably would have said, yeah, let's call this encouragement. I just wouldn't have been uh, for a variety of reasons. But, and I heard one uh, very, very famous preacher, who you probably know, I'll leave him nameless, talk about, you know, why do we feel like we have to be encouraged all the time? Well, first of all, the Bible says so. And uh, I'm not diminishing that we can become kind of babyish about it, where we constantly need to have our spiritual back rubs and, you know, our pats on the back and someone always telling us how good we are and how awesome we are. I mean, that can become like an elixir, like a, like a toxic thing. Anything good can become toxic if, if you overdo it. Hey, Carmen, nice to have you. If I miss your name, I apologize. Anyway, so today, August 14, 665, I want to talk about what is encouraged. What does the word mm -hmm. encourage mean? Okay, because first of all, in order to understand, you've got to know what the word actually means. And please, please, please investigate what words mean, even though they change and they morph into something other than what they were intended to be. It's good for you to know what they mean, because God's word doesn't change. <clears throat> you know, if the Lord says a word, if he breathes out a word, okay, then it doesn't change. Anyway, so we're going to talk about what does the word actually mean, how to have courage or encouragement, and how to give it to others. Most importantly, number three. So, so, uh, yeah, listen up. Let's get through this pretty quickly here today. I'm not trying to rush, but I guess I am. So, first of all, Webster's. Webster's Dictionary. Merriam-Webster. I'm not exactly sure the difference between Webster and Merriam-Webster. This is how they define the word encourage. Okay? Somebody um, contacted me yesterday and kind of tongue-in-cheek says, I don't like to use the acronym for your program and I told him I said neither do I the acronym is WOE which is the exact opposite of encouragement right whoa woe unto you and you know I think there is something in that in the respect that sometimes the things that God gives to us as instructions or even warnings or even rebukes like he did some of the churches uh, they are you know even if he said woe unto you Bethsaida and Corinth and these different churches because of this Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Do you know 
that those words that he gave to them were actually meant to turn their hearts into a place where they could receive from the Lord because they were in alignment with him. Okay, God's not going to go, hey, I don't really care if you're doing things my way. It doesn't really matter. I love you so much. I'm just going to bless you no matter what. And then when you die, you'll go to heaven. Uh Uh-uh. It doesn't work that way. Okay. He says, I do love you more than you'll ever understand. Yada, yada, yada. But you know what? I don't want to see you destroy yourself and others. So he does give us warnings and so on. So in a way, even the instructive or the... uh, corrective things that the Lord says are, they can be encouraging. Wow, God cared enough about me to say, hey, you're doing this thing wrong. Hey, you should stop. Oh, hey, you are you should turn left instead of right or right instead of left. Hey, you're headed for a cliff. That's good, right? I mean, come on, really. It says, despise not the chastening, the spanking of the Lord, because whom the Lord loves, he rebukes and chastens. It is literally an act of love. So, so I don't typically use the acronym for the program W-O-E <laughs> because I know how people are, okay? I'm kind of a student of human nature. Anyway, all right. So the word encourage in Merriam-Webster literally means to inspire with courage, spirit, or hope. To fill, now listen to this closely. Here's the part where you really tune in. To uh-huh. fill with Courage, strength, and purpose. I'm going to isolate courage because the word encourage, E-N slash courage, means to put courage in. Now, E could be changed to I, and literally that is a primary meaning of the word. Not the only meaning, but a primary meaning of the word. It means to put in courage. Raise your hand if you're like, Yeah, I could use some courage. And let me just say this. I firmly believe that all believers now are, it's becoming a necessity to encourage ourselves in the Lord, to put courage into us. We need to be people of courage. We're living in day now. I'm not just talking about resisting this, woke or this or evil or whatever. There's that too. But courage, listen, courage to be who God intended you to be. Okay, sometimes I like to ask people, go through this little quiz thing and say, number one, do you believe in God? Yes, 90-some percent of people believe in God. Do you believe in God? Yes. Why? Well, because of this. I, t- I was taught it, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, well, do you have any source of authority for that? Do you be- What about the Bible? Do you believe the Bible? The number actually drops, crazy as it is, but the number drops, 70-some percent, whatever, say, yeah, I believe the Bible. So, off that platform, you believe in God and you believe the Bible, then what does God say in his words, words that he wrote down, he was smart enough to write down his words, what does it say about you? Okay, let me just encapsulate it. You're you're living in this day for a reason. You weren't born out of time. You weren't born out of sea. Well, I, I think I'm a person, I... I'm an old, say, I should have been born in the cowboy days. I should have been born in the days of this. No, 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 no. There's no mistake. You were born in this age on purpose. And on the blank canvas of your destiny, God painted a picture. And he said, this is what Debbie, this is what Linda, this is what Mark, this is what Jim is going to look like if, if, if he'll agree with it. Because, see, God won't make you do it. But if you'll agree with it, he will take you. He won't make you, but he'll take you. You get that. So the destiny that's on your life is not uncontrollable. I know the movies say that. It's hogwash. It's, I would go so far to say it's, it's a demonic idea. But somehow you can't escape your destiny. You know, there's the movies, you know, where no matter what the person does, they always wind up back in this. But no, no, no. That's all foolishness. That is the antithesis, the anti of the idea of having a will. You literally have a great deal of control. Now, God can step in and do whatever he wants. Sometimes things happen to you out of your control. I get that. It's not altogether one or the other. But you pretty much get to say where you go. Even heaven or hell are your choice. Okay, That is the ultimate destiny, heaven and hell. You're not predestined. I know some people believe this, but you are not predestined to go to heaven or hell. God says, I would or I will. It is my will that none perish. Uh 
It is my will. He said this out loud specifically. Well, not out loud. You get what I'm saying. Okay. It is not my will that any should perish. So that means there is no predestined to be in. You're predestined in the sense that God says, yeah. I mean, I've, 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 I've got a beautiful plan for your life. I painted it on the canvas of your, your whole life. Every day of your life was written down in my book, even before one of the kings passed. But it doesn't mean he's saying he's like you're a puppet. No, 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 no. All right. That itself, even though that might sound discouraging, discourage means to take courage out. It is actually intended to be encouraging, to put courage in. So first thing, the definition of the word encourage means in courage, to put courage in you. Okay, and you need courage in these last days. We all do. And the good news is today, the encouraging news today is you can have it. Okay, he's not stingy with it. He's not going to go, well, if you try hard enough, I'll put it in you. No, he says it is there for the asking, but you do have to ask. There's almost always a condition, right? Okay, it's not like impossible condition, but you do have to ask. All right, so let's read a real quick example. I got about 10 minutes is all. The story of Joshua before he goes into the promised land. Now, I could take hours and hours on this, as I, you all know. But let's just go through this real quick. This is uh, uh, chapter uh, 1, Joshua chapter 1, okay, when he's getting ready to literally go into and take other people. Huge point. The group that Joshua is about to take into their promised land, okay, every one of us have a promised land that is there, but we haven't gone into yet. Okay, just because you are you listening? Are you listening? I want you to get this so bad. Just because you're not in it doesn't mean it's not there. Just because you're not in it, your promised land doesn't mean it's not there. It is there. Okay. Well, if it's my promised land, then how come I'm not there? Well, I, there's a lot of reasons for that. Their reason was because they they just had to walk it out. They had steps to take, literal, physical walking. They had to cross the river. They had to brandish their swords. They had to go and fight for the enemy that says, well, you may think this is your destiny. You may think this is your promised land, but I think it belongs to me. And so I'm going to fight you for it. Okay. So again, we have this conception mm -hmm. sometimes, this wrong view of the sovereignty of God, that if it's God, if it's your destiny, blah, 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 blah. If it's a promise, it's always going to happen. That is not true in most cases. Okay, again, we stray away from the always, the never, the, you know, all of that. Like me and my wife talk about, you never do this. You always do this. We, we try to avoid that language because it's almost never true. Okay, So sometimes God does just take over with his promises and there's nothing you can do about it. Like when he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on the last days. You can't stop that. You can't create that. All you can do is position yourself for it. Most of the promises of God for your life are not... Okay, unconditional. I know, I know that's going to shock some of you and it's going to fly in the face of what so many preachers say. But you read your Bible, you'll find there's almost always, and it's not a bad thing because you're cooperating with God is good. There's almost always an if attached to it. Have courage, have faith, live rightly, right? So on and so on. So these guys are getting ready to go into the problem. They have a land waiting for them but they have to do something. And one of the fundamental things they have to do is to be encouraged. Now, God speaks to Joshua so that courage will come to him. And he actually commands him to stir up courage in himself. Hey, Kev. Hey, Tammy. How are you guys doing? Um, <clears throat> if he can't have courage, listen to me now. If he can't, if Joshua can't have courage encouraged to put courage in him. If he can't, he cannot put courage in other people. Oh, I can't put courage in other people. You're wrong. You absolutely can put courage in someone else. Not only can you do it, God expects you at certain times to do it. Okay. He doesn't just put all this stuff in you so you can have a great life. You can have a great life, but he, he puts it in you, ju not just to bless you, but you have the capacity. Oh, shut up. I want to talk in tongues. I want to talk in tongues right now. You have the capacity to put courage in someone else. You need to know that's true. Okay? I know we can fall into this thing. We're always feeling like we're the one that needs courage. And we do. We do. I do. I have people that, I have one of my good friends this morning texted me and said something that's just like, yeah, just put courage in me. Okay? It doesn't take a lot sometimes. 
But we can get into the place, we can fall into that place where, where it's always about, I need, I need, I need, I need. And sometimes your need will be met as you seek to put courage into someone else. Are you listening? Sometimes the best way for your need to be met is to meet the need of someone else. You need courage, find someone else who needs it. Well, it, no, it's not some big, magical, you know, super anointed, you know, you're shaking under the power of God. No, just say something. Just say something. Say something nice to them. Tell them that, you know, that God is with, you know, it doesn't take much. I think part of the problem is we think it does. All right, I'm almost out of time. Let me read it. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant or aide, Moses, my servant, is dead. The first thing he said, hey, listen, and I'm going to say, thus saith the Lord to you, it's dead. Okay? There are certain things in your life that are over. They're done. They're completed. I know it's hard because we want to go into something and stay there forever because it gives us a sense of security and comfort. But I'm saying to you, thus saith the Lord, it's done. It's over. A new chapter, a new page in your book is being turned. Okay? Don't spend the rest of your life fighting what God says is over. Okay? Now, now Joshua could have done that with Moses, but God, the very first thing he says, hey, listen, that chapter is gone. Moses is dead. Now then, he says, I'm reading this. Now then. Okay, let that be that. You and, I'm not going to get through all this, and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River. Jordan mm -hmm. means death, actually. So there's a death to the old, a beginning of the new, that I'm about to give them, about to give them. I'm about to give it to them, but Joshua, they've got to cross the river. They got to go over and fight. And you, my friend, have got to put something into them so they're not. Joshua could have stood up. Remember, why, why did God get so upset when the 40 went across and spied out the land and came back and gave an evil report? Because it says they discouraged, they took courage out. Their testimony sucked courage out of somebody else's life. And all they had to do was speak the right or the wrong thing. It's important. All right, he says, I'm about to give it to them. I will give, and then he says, I will give to every place your foot goes on. I know people use that in different ways. I'm not going to go there because that, that doesn't apply to everybody. You can't just determine every place I go, God's going to, you know, I, I want that house. I want that car. There's a balance there. I'm just, yeah, I got to go past that. He says, no one will be able to stand against, now this does apply. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, in other words, these former days that are now gone, as I was with that, I'll be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Did you wonder where that New Testament phrase came from? It came from this right here. Bet you didn't know that. I will never leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Now, the Lord didn't say, I'm putting courage in you. No, he said, you, 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 you. Um, maybe Josh was like, oh, I can't, I can't. Like Moses, I can't talk, I can't do this. No, no, don't call God a liar. Okay, God says, you know, you have courage. Have courage. David said, I encouraged myself. And I know we don't want that. We want it to be God. We want it to just happen. We want it, oh, today I feel really great and so I am great. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter how you feel. Put courage in yourself. And one of the ways you can do this is by putting it in other people. He said, be strong and very, V-E-R-Y, that's important, very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law of my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn to the right or left. And then he says, keep this book, the book, okay, one of the issues, I've got to end here, one of the issues of courage is the book. In attached, attached, like an umbilical cord to an infant, attached to his courage was the command to keep that book in front of his eyes and don't miss this on his lips so many people read the bible but they never speak the word of god jesus when he was assaulted by the devil himself the hench the kingpin okay because i don't think we often get the kingpin we think we do but really it's some you know lesser demon coming against us he opened his mouth okay 
If you would ever stand face to face with Satan, that's what you should do is speak the word of God. But if you don't read the word of God and you don't know the word of God and you have no idea what God who dwells in heaven actually said. So you can say his words and his words carry power to do the trick. You're in trouble. <laughs> so he said, this word will be in your heart and on your lips and you're supposed to meditate day and night and so on. And so on. And then he says, have I not commanded you? I'm saying it a second time. And I hear the Lord saying it to some of you today, a second time. I am commanding you. He used the word command. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Now, did it boom? Did that hit him? Boom in the chest right then. He's just, whoa, I just encountered the Lord and now I'm strong and courageous. I don't know. Maybe. But if that was the case, then why did he have to command him twice? No, you. No, you, 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 you. You be. Make this a priority. Set your heart to do it today. Okay, whatever. It says do and then he goes on to say, do not. So he says, be, that's the do. And then he said, do not. Do be strong, courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I'm gonna ask you this question. Who gave you permission to be discouraged? Certainly not God. I, I'm pointing at myself here. <laughs> when we point one at you, we point five back at us. Who gave you permission to be discouraged? God says, don't do it. I do not give you permission to walk in discouragement. Stop it. Treat it like the demon that it is. Okay. I know there's not always a demon. I get that. Treat that thing like the devil that it is and command it to go for it. I will not be discouraged in Jesus' name. You foul demonic spirit, get away from me right now. I have the capacity to be encouraged, for courage to come into me, not discourage, for it to go out of me. Last thing, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. There's discouraged, I so want you to miss that. Encourage, discourage, are both mentioned in the same passage. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Whether you feel like he's with you, he's still with you. When you don't feel like he's with you, he's still with you. The Lord your God will be with you. And then it goes on to say, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people. The very first thing he did was went and did his best to put courage in others. You watch the movies, you know, where the guys are getting ready to fight the big battle and death is on the line. And uh, and like I think of Braveheart, they're riding back and forth in front of, you know, or uh, uh, Lord of the Rings or whatever. You know, they're riding, you know, mm -hmm. there may come a day when the strength of men fail, but this is not that day. Listen, there is something about that, about confessing what his word says, not what you feel. I got to end right here. The next thing, I, I did put a link on here. You just must watch this this link. You just must. I'm telling you, it is so encouraging. So you need courage. There's, a, It's kind of long. It's from Morningstar. I have to admit, I haven't typically liked this guy's teaching style because he's very line upon line. And I'm, 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 a, little, I'm a little ADD and OCD at the same time. But this guy talks about the synergy of the ages, and he gets to a point. All you Star Wars fans out there, he uses some powerful, some of them out there get kind of goofy, powerful uh, illustrations from, from the Lord of the Rings. So anyway, just want to encourage you to watch that. I have to end. I've got a Zoom call, and I've got somebody coming on the property, so i got to go. Love you guys. Hey, take heed to these words today. You need courage. You can receive courage. It can in to you, encourage, and you can encourage or discourage someone else. Go out, set it on your heart to give courage to someone today. Love you guys. God bless you and give yourself.